Stay tuned now for Politics and Your Health with Dr. Victor Sternberg on 1460 WVOX. Good morning. Welcome to Politics in Your House, starring Dr. Victor Sternberg here on 1460 WVOX. We're here each and every Friday at this time. Dr. Sternberg is a periodontist by trade, but prevention and entire body healing uh, and your health are his concerns. His specialty, of course, here and why we are here is how politics affects your health. Without further ado, let's say hello to the star of our program, Dr. Victor Sternberg. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Bob. So these are, these are tough times. Yeah, these are tough times. I, w- I don't want to spend the show on on the gun issue, but I want to bring up a couple of pertinent issues. Okay, if you would. First, the issue of the Second Amendment. I did my homework and I looked up before we came here. I'd like to know how many listeners know what the Third Amendment to the Constitution is, because it'll give you context where the Second Amendment came from. Mm-hmm. The Third Amendment to the Constitution says, "No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered at any house without the consent of the owner." nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Do you know what that came from, Bob? British soldiers were living in the homes of the, of the people in America. That amendment came out of the experience we had with the British soldiers. It was, it was a way to deal with that kind of possibility. The Second Amendment came out of the fact that there was great distrust for the federal government because of the, what happened with the British. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to have a militia just in case. Yes. It had nothing to do with you protecting your home or going hunting. Okay, that being said, a couple of interesting facts I, I, I looked up. Do you know that 16 children a day are hospitalized in the United States because of gunshot wounds? Mm-hmm. 16 children. I'm not surprised. Most of them are accidental, by the way. 16 children. One child is shot in the United States every 44 seconds. Mm-hmm. And... There are 110,000 shootings a year. Just to put it in perspective, these are non-fatal shootings. Okay, now, I, I've i struggled with this idea of the Second Amendment, and it, it's, it's an existential crisis in America. What happened yesterday, or the other day in Florida, is gonna continue to happen. This is now a normal, a new normal in America. And we have to make a decision, and it, let's have a conversation. Either the Second Amendment is so important to the viability of American freedom that we are going to continue to accept these children's deaths and other mass killings as collateral damage. We accept it because it's so sanctimite this amendment. We've just heard let Lionel us, say let, that he would. Let us accept it. That, and, he, you know, Lionel, I hope you have no children that end up dead like these people. I want you to ask the parents of these children who are burying their children today whether they'd rather have live children or the ability to, for people to have assault weapons and other weapons. Ask the parents. Those are the ones that matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that being said, I want to leave that alone because remember, we made a, such an enormous commitment against terrorists. There are, there are 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. Mm-hmm. If 1% of them are jihadists, insane jihadists, that's 15 million jihadists. Mm-hmm. They can cause a lot of damage. We've spent mm-hmm. trillions of dollars to deal with them. We've taken away my freedom when I go on an airplane tomorrow. I gotta go through all kinds of all kinds of chicanery to, to get everything out, to take things away from me on the airplane. They, my phone calls are being listed somewhere. I've given up some of my civil rights to protect me against jihadists. Yet the greatest danger to my, to my family is some nut with a gun. Mm-hmm. So what is that about? There are probably several hundred thousand people in the United States like this young man. It's estimated that one to 3% of our population is sociopathic. The f- sad fact of life is that Either you accept that there are enough sociopaths who are going to get guns and kill you, or you decide to w- w- do something about the amendment. It comes down to either we accept this as collateral damage or repeal and replace the Second Amendment. And let's have a conversation. The feckless people in Congress, remember, the Second Amendment should have been term limits. We'd be a better country. But they won't even discuss the issue because they don't want to lose votes. Hmm. Folks, it is all about votes in the states where these congressmen live. It is not about anything else, and if you believe that, I'll sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. Huh. Enough said of that. How much you want? What uh, else you got, doctor? Let's get rolling. Okay, What's let, going on with the flu? Oh, you know, that they just reported 36% uh, was the effective rate of the flu vaccine. Interesting, in Japan, they're about to market a pill Saw that. that's going to reduce the symptoms to one day. I promise you when that pill is released in Japan, and makes a difference. The FDA will go through months or years 
of testing of Americans because we're different than Japanese people, obviously. We react differently to drugs. That's the FDA's view. So if it works in Japan, here's one of my questions for the American uh, FDA. If something works in another country with very few side effects, why don't we just adapt their data? Why do you have to go through this enormous expense? Do you have an answer for that? I don't have an answer for that. The FDA has set up a a system of rules that does not allow us to use data from other countries to approve drugs without studying myself. And it's going to be very interesting what happens because if there should be a fast track system to deal with this issue and let's hope that it is, it it works and we can eliminate this, this scourge called uh, flu deaths, which takes too many people. I don't know if you read this teacher, 38 year old teacher died of the flu she didn't want to go get the uh, Tamiflu injection. It was a $116 copay. She mm-hmm. said, well, I'll save the money. It's a lot of money. And she died, left the family. You know, that's another question. How those, you know, it seems to me that when people have certain illnesses like the flu or acute illnesses, that there should be no copay. There shouldn't be something you got to worry about paying money to be, to be treated for an illness which can mm-hmm. kill you. But that's another story. Another health issue, and then I'll get to some of the other things we can talk about with some of the listeners. There was just a study released on the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. I don't know if you read this, Bob. They found in mice a, one particular gene that produced one particular enzyme mm-hmm. that caused this amyloid plaque that caused the Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's disease. And when they eliminated this gene, this one gene, not only did the Alzheimer's stop, it reversed. And all of the rats ended up, the mice ended up healthy. This is a breakthrough in terms of understanding the, the biology and pathology of this disease. Again, I'll ask you this question. If this truly worked in animals, why is it gonna take years and years to test in humans? We have a population of people who are becoming a dying or becoming completely incapable of taking care of themselves. Why don't we fast track things? If it ends up being having del- deleterious side effects, we'll deal with it. Sometimes we are so reticent to deal with things that have any downside that we, we, we delay it to our own peril. Absolutely. Doctor, we've uh, talked about endlessly on this program over the years the use of immunology and uh, geneticists' uh, work to cure cancer. And we're seeing more and more pieces now about the possibility of a cancer vaccine. This is an illness that has been variously described as particular to each person, as complicated. Right. There are hundreds of forms. Well, one would think that is there is there some way to enhance the integrity of a cell and actually have an all-purpose vaccine? Well, we have to find a way to make the cell less defensive. Yes. There are mechanisms in a cell's metabolism, a cancer cell, that makes it protective against your immune system. Yes. And what we're trying very hard to do is lower that ability of the cell to resist either chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or the patient's individual immune system. Mm-hmm. You and I are producing cancer cells as we sit here. But then they get, but then they get squelched by a gene that squelched. Our immune system is able to deal with them. It's not that you and I don't have cancer cells, Bob. We have them. Thanks a lot. But our immune system, well, you know what? It, you know, it's, like, it's, it's like we're in a shooting gallery. Everyone's <laughs> yeah. in a shooting oh, gallery. Thanks, Doc. And as long as we've got <laughs> enough bullets, so we're shooting down the cancer cells. The moment those bullets start to get blunted, that's when we get sick. I really appreciate it. So, so, so the whole, you know, why you and I are not sick <laughs> is very important, uh, equally important to why people are sick. Once we understand that issue, why I didn't get the flu and you didn't get the flu, and I was exposed to it, my immune system. It's, isn't this a violation of the Third Amendment? I have all these little soldiers who are living inside. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. We have to deal with Let's. I think we should revisit you're, that. You're listening to Politics in Your Health starring Dr. Victor Sternberg. You're on 1460 WVOX and worldwide on WVOX.com. A little levity, but serious that, this topic. So why, why are we, we saying that maybe we think a, uh, a vaccine may be at hand? Well, again, you know, this is, this is in the theoretical stage. I think once, I don't know if a vaccine per se will prevent cancer, because you're right, Bob, there are different kinds of cancers and each of them reacts differently. Um, unless they've come up with a way to enhance the immune system, that it will allow the immune system to universally kill cancer cells, I think more likely, Bob, they're going to find a way to allow cancer cells to be attacked differently, to lose their resistance. That's really what's going to come. It's not going to give you a shot to you and never get cancer. That's not. Yeah, that's that's a little fairy tale. I want to shout out to all the cancer cells in my body. Go away. Now, I know you have a couple of other items. Let me know when you're ready to take calls. You have three yep. strong on the board, sir. Okay, so just a quick thing about the Dental Society. Westchester Dental Society has decided that we are going to offer free dental care to 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 veterans. A group of us have gotten together, and right now we're seeking dentists in the Peekskill area to take homeless sh- veterans 
who have not had dental care and provide them free of charge at mm-hmm. our time, wow. dental care. You know, this is giving back. You know, and many of us are willing to commit some of our time to provide these soldiers who served us something that they need. Some of them have desperate dental issues that don't get dealt with. It's a wonderful thing. And so this is a uh, this is a big plus. All right, I'm ready to take some calls. All right, then we will go to the phones. For those of you who are not yet with us, uh, by taking a couple of calls, we'll clear the board a bit for you. 636-0110. 914-636-0110. Tom from Pelham, you're on with Dr. Sternberg. Good morning, Tom. Hi. Good morning, Bob. Hello, doctor. Thank um you. you were talking about Oh, God, the recent tragedy, which is just heart-wrenching. heart wrenching. But, uh, you know, I want to say this. I mean, I've come to the realization now that we are not safe anywhere. We've had attacks inside of school buildings, churches, airports, shopping malls, sporting and music events, restaurants, bicycle lanes. It's all over the place. And it's been every form of, uh, every form of attack. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to eradicate it. I don't think we are. I think it's foolish for us to think that, you know, turning back the Second Amendment is going to change anything when there's over 300 million guns mm-hmm. out in circulation. And let's face it, the, the laws, you know, the, the laws of, of the gun, you know, to protect people against themselves, they supersede the criminal who wants to get the gun and who wants to wreak havoc. And I understand that this uh, kid that went into the school got his weapon in, in a lawful way, um, but also... A lot of things were missed, and my idea for protecting the schools, I mean, you should never lose your child by sending him to school on a no. Wednesday morning, on a Valentine's Day. You should never lose your child that way. We have iPhones now that if you look at, they recognize you. You put your fingertip on it, they know who you are. Why can't every child in every school district across this nation be fingerprinted? We know who they are. They walk through the, 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 the uh, metal detector entering the building. They put their finger down on the pad, and they get let in the building. I know it's expensive, but there's no cost that isn't too great Thomas, to protect a child. if I may, you know, uh, when I raise this question to lawyers and law enforcement officials, they tell me there are laws against doing that for yeah. minors. Yeah. And that's one of the, 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 yeah. the things that's just horrible. And also, Doctor, you mentioned a statistic before. I'm sure uh, yes. Tom would be interested in about how many times the cops went to this kid's home. Yeah, the police got 37 calls over the last seven years to go to the home of that child. So the you know, shooter. here's the issue. I don't care what you do. You put 300 million guns and you have hundreds of thousands of sociopaths. You are going to have dead children and dead people. There's nothing you can do to protect it. If Just like if opioids were available on every street corner legally, you're going to have a lot more dead people. The reality is that, unfortunately, a certain segment of our population will do nefarious things. And given appropriate weapons, they will kill people. And unless you deal with this amendment, that I'm going to say, just, look, I'm, will, I'm not going to argue with you about that. It's either dead kids or we deal with guns. Let me you follow wanna... up on this, because, Bob, I know you didn't mean to, but it seemed like it glo- you glossed over it by saying, well, they're minors. You know, when my child, my children graduated from elementary school, they produced a little yearbook with their picture and their name on it that went into the hands of other parents that now became in the public yes, domain. Yes, I, I agree with you. So I have no yeah. problem with the, the minute a child is born in America, their feet, their fingers, everything is, is printed. And I know when they get older, certain things, characteristics may change. You can alter your fingerprint by burning it. But wouldn't that be a good place to begin? I mean, it I might agree with save you. one life by I, doing I, that. I, I thoroughly agree with yeah. you. Hey, we have an incident here yeah. in New Rochelle. We can't even get anybody to say whether they're sub- su- subjects, persons of interest, people yeah. going for yeah. a slice yeah. of pizza. When it comes to children, people with agendas will use our protection of right. them to their okay. own political I, I, I agree with you on, on that, Bob. Tom, what do you want? Tom, uh, you know what? what? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Let me interject. Doctor. We have given up some freedoms to deal with terrorism. Your phone calls are recorded, not necessarily the verbal, but the the numbers. When I go on a plane tomorrow, I've got to go through all kinds of gyrations because of a terrorist. Are you willing to give up some freedoms to protect your children? If the answer is no, say, you know what? We have to go. Dead kids are uh, collateral. I got to go. go, Thank you very much. And now Vince is on from New Rochelle. Vince, you're on with Dr. Sternberg. Good morning, Vince. Yeah, hi, doctor. Pleasure speaking with you again. I, I think the basic thrust of your uh, argument is correct. Something must be done. We do need to look at the Second Amendment, although I do think that 
it was a right of personal possession back then. Uh, the militia, yes, that was an argument. But just like with other things, nobody thought they had to write an amendment protecting someone's right to protect themselves in their own home with a gun. That was just assumed. Okay, and I, I don't want to go down that road. But yes, you're right about that. That was a different age in time. But in terms of a solution, what Tom is talking about in terms of you know kids coming into school and ID them, that's not the problem. The problem is the book bag. Okay, the problem is what are they bringing in the school? Now I don't want to. I, I talked about that eye infinitum the other day. Mm -hmm. But the simple matter is, by law, I must send my kids to school. So the school must take reasonable steps to protect my kid. Now, if that means kids go through a scanner like at airports, if that's the new normal now, well, it's unfortunate. I don't like it, but maybe that's the new normal. But the last thought I would offer you is, as Tom was saying, 300 million guns in circulation. I'm open to the discussion of passing a law requiring the surrendering and seizure of whole classes of weapons. Wow. And also, if anybody is found on the street with a weapon, mandatory 10-year prison sentence. Do you think those are reasonable ideas? If it'll save lives. You know, we run into wow. this whole thing about civil liberties, my friend, and we get where we have a tough balancing act. Great call. But listen, if we don't take draconian measures, we will not have change in the outcomes. I don't, I don't disagree with you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take another call. Vince, great call. Thank you very much. Let's go to Rick. Rick, you're on with Dr. Sternberg. Good morning. Thank you very Good much. Morning, you know, Rick. Dr. Sternberg, when you're just talking about the civil liberties, you know, there are certain civil liberties that we do give up, as you said before, like when we fly. When we fly, it, people who want to go shooting, carrying guns, they can't bring their gun on an airplane. If they're going to bring it, it's got to go down, you know, into cargo, whatever. It's a, a long gun or they can't be brought with them. These are the things that you sacrifice for safety. Uh, but I think, as in so many other circumstances, until there's going to be a breaking point, and that breaking point hasn't been hit yet. I don't know really what it's going to take, at what number it, it, of children, or how big a massacre before somebody's going to get up and say... They don't care. Got you got you got that. tens of thousands, yeah. millions yeah. of dollars being paid to people mm -hmm. who get elected. You yeah. know, I, I suggested on the morning show today yes. that someone like a Bill Gates doctor yeah. should take ten million of his dollars and put in every newspaper in the country a list of elected officials, Democrat and Republican, who take money from the NRA. Right. It should be published. Everybody should see it. And people who want this change should either vote those people out of the office or tell them not to take money anymore. The sad fact of life is that the politicians we need a book called Profiles and Cowardice. The politicians have one goal, and only one, no matter what they tell you, and that's re-election. Re right. And so as long as that exists, without term limits, you know, suddenly Jeff Flake is speaking out in the, in the Senate. Why is he speaking out? Because he's not he's running not for running election. Again. It's all about the freedom to not worry about getting re-elected. Believe me, there are Republicans that don't like guns either. But if they say that, they will not get reelected. And get that's the reality. The argument is all about election. <laughs> it's not about politics. All right, we're going to go to another call. Rick, thank you very much. Mitchell is on. Mitchell, good morning. Good morning, Mitch. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, I'd like you. to deviate the discussion a little. You know, I heard someone trying to make an argument by comparing the United States to Honduras. And there yeah. lies the problem, because yeah. what, kind of what kind of psycho is that? that <laughs> us I don't know to, why. To <laughs> us. And there lies the problem, is psychology. We have a big mental uh, illness problem. Uh, Doc, I, I have a, a, a very good friend who's having a, a, a really hard time with her teenage kids. She has, at her wit's end, she's gone to get help. You know what help there is for her? Nothing. And her, her insurance doesn't cover psychiatrist so she has the pleasure yep. of trying to figure out how to pay two to three hundred dollars a visit for her son and she is getting absolutely no help and here the, we you know yes bob you know i'm, I'm my feelings about uh, uh gun control sure. I'm, I'm all for it but my god 25 billion dollars for a wall and not a dime for mental is there something wrong with that or was it me? Mitchell, I don't disagree with you, but just remember the young man in Newtown had lots of therapy. He was an autistic child who was obviously mentally ill. 
His mother did everything she could for this kid. Yeah, including lo- giving him guns. Got His mother lot, was whacked. No, out. lots of therapy, but there were there were there were there were guns in the house. There were assault rifles oh, legally yeah. in the house of a boy that had so mental illness. Shot her but, no, no, Doc, Doc, you were one hundred percent right. But my God, this country has to learn to how to chew and walk at the same time, and we have to have a two track. We have to put billions of dollars towards mental health. Uh, uh, Sure, and, and, and therapy and help for people who can't afford it. And also, at the same time, get guns off, uh, 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 get sensible gun control, and get uh, uh, semi automatic weapons and automatic weapons okay. and guns of mass destruction out of the hands of people. We need to be able to take those two tracks, and if we can't, one is not enough. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mitch. We got to take another call. Doctor. It is 724. We go to Chris. You're on with Dr. Sternberg. Chris. Good morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, Doc. Good morning, Bob. Yeah, uh, Doc, yeah, I, I agree with your, uh, uh, your opinion about the uh, you know, gun control. And I'll take it a step further. I agree with Harlan Allman's that, uh, that it should be that the Second Amendment really doesn't apply anymore. It should be repealed and replaced. And the reason that we're, we're in the dilemma that we're in, we're not able to come to any kind of agreement or understanding about solving this issue is that the House, the Senate, and the presidency is, in, is controlled by the four R's, okay, the rural, religious, right, Republicans, okay, and, and that's why, okay, who happen to believe in insurrection. Okay, they have the insurrection mentality that they need these type of arms to protect themselves against the government. Okay. Well, Chris, you left out one R, but it has an N in it, the NRA and the gun manufacturers, uh, because remember, the money that goes to pay the congressmen and the senators comes from the gun manufacturers who make a lot of money selling guns. And you always have to follow the money. I get the idea of, of, of that particular political group of uh, evangelists, but I would say that money trumps any other group. Money makes the system work. Gun manufacturers make money, and they will fund the NRA, which will take care of the politicians. I had a, a question for you, Dr. Myself. Chris, thank you very thank much you, for the call. And, and I need to ask this because it, it hit home. Uh, I had a guest on this morning who tried to make the case of SSRIs, uh, that one of the side effects is teenagers becoming suicidal. And I was offended by that. As you know, um, I was treated with SSRIs. Right. A very serious depression. And people who didn't have it have no idea how wonderful these medications are in saving lives. Now, do they save millions or are they this toxic brew that makes children's kill like the caller said? Listen, there is side effects to every drug. It's about the benefit versus the downside and everything. You know, getting back to two issues I want to bring up, and I want to bring this up. Uh, One of the gentlemen talked about we need to spend more money Mm -hmm. on, on mental health. You know, the budget, just just give you some numbers because facts don't lie, just people make make up their own opinion of them. In uh, 19, eight, 1989, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and food stamps represented 47% of the budget. Mm-hmm. Today, it's 70%. Wow. Now, defense spending has actually gone down in percentage from that time, mm-hmm. from 25 during the height of it to, to about 15%. We're spending 70% of the budget of the United States on social services, Medicare, Medicaid, and, and Social Security. Well, that's unsustainable. So, so, I under, so it's not that we're not spending money. I'm going to go back to this thought again, and this is, this is resisted. There are sociopaths in large numbers in this country. It's hundreds of thousands, if not millions. As long as there are, it's available to them guns, they'll use them. They're not going to be stopped by what you do. Just like opioids. The opioid manufacturers, Purdue from Connecticut, paid a $600 million fine in 2007 for falsely advertising that opioids were not were not addictive. They did not. The, absolutely, they paid a $600 million fine. They they, they put said a said it wasn't addictive. How could it they even not, say because that? The same reason drug ma- uh, gun manufacturers tell us that guns are here to protect us. It is self interest. The drug industry is greatly responsible for the opioid epidemic. They talk doctors into believing drugs are a right. You have a right to have no pain. 
It was bull. It was not necessary for the vast majority of people. So those of you that have political views that always come down on one side or the other, just follow the money. Yeah, it's in the middle. Same thing. You know, there are, the president included, to be fair to the president of the United States, we do waste money on food stamps. We do waste money on entitlements that aren't fettered properly. There's no question about it. Let me ask you, folks, do you have any trouble with able-bodied people who don't have, that, that are receiving Medicaid or, or, or food stamps doing something? No. I don't either. And I also thought about this issue of issuing food boxes to people. Is it negative because it takes away their right to buy what they want? When you're receiving something from somebody else, your freedom has to be a little impinged upon because you didn't earn no, it. There, there be and, and my job as a society is to make sure you're nourished, not that you make choices. I want your children to eat well. And so a lot of food stamps are sold for drugs. That This system is when you give people something that they didn't earn, they have to look at it a little differently our purpose is to make sure you don't get sick and you don't starve. Dr. That's our purpose. Sadly, we're coming up on the end of the show. I wanted to ask you what you thought of uh, the lunch programs for kids because I think they help keep parents irresponsible. Yeah. Well, you know, it gets back to the same issue again. You know, what is the purpose of government and society? Where do parents' go responsibilities end and where does society begin? These, these are very difficult questions. Some children, no one should starve. But we should have stringent rules who get stuff. It should right. not be we just everybody who has who walks into school gets something. I don't believe that at all. It's tough in the middle, Doctor. 929, we've got about a minute left. Doctor, what would you like to add? What are I, your closing comments? My co closing comments are that I want you to visit us. We're putting we're, we're taping this session. You can see Bob and I actually as future movie stars. Uh, uh, public I hate to brag. <laughs> uh, my dental society is coming out with a public service announcement. Please. Take care of your gums because they're now linked to many other diseases. Dr. Save My Teeth, well, happy to see you, meet you, and talk to you. Thank you. Doctor, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to Jovan C. Richards, the Prince of Westchester, on the other side of the glass. Thank you very much. I want to thank all the callers. Great comments today. And, of course, we're here each and every Friday at 903. That's Politics and Your Health, starring Dr. Victor Sternberg. Thank you for listening. Great programs ahead. And remember, Paul Feiner's back with the Greenberg Report today. And enjoy the heat. Be around 60 degrees. Take care. We'll see you soon.